In this lesson, we're gonna learn how to solve one-step algebraic equations. So first, let's go over what's an algebraic equation. An equation is a mathematical statement stating that two expressions are equal. They have the exact same values. Algebraic equations contain at least one variable. So here are some examples. So 3 plus 2 and 2 plus x are expressions. However, if we want to make 3 plus 2 into an equation, we have to make it equal to something else. So 3 plus 2 equals 5. Now it's an equation because the left side is equal to 5 and the right side is also equal to 5. We could make an equation out of it by this statement also. Because 3 plus 2 is 5, and 8 minus 3 is also 5. So this 2 would be an equation. Now, when we have a variable and we don't know the value of the variable, 2 plus x equals 5, we have to solve this equation to determine the value of x. So this time we're assuming that because the equal sign is there, that we are there is an equality statement and we are going to discover what the value of x is because the statement is an equation. Now why do we need to solve algebraic equations? So Isaac Newton needed equations to discover his, or to well, describe his theory of gravitational force. Sports network, remember Super Bowl? Okay, when they make those statistical predictions about probabilities of who's going to win the Super Bowl next year, they are using algebraic equations. People who design buildings, like the schools that you're in, when they're trying to determine the measurements of the structures to see if they can fit in that space that they're told that the school has to go on, or if the land is even going to be able to support the mass of the structure it's going to be built on, they need equations. We need equations for lots of things. Specifically, a lot of times, it's for making predictions. They help us tell the future. So what properties help us to solve algebraic equations? Well, a lot of the properties that help us solve algebraic equations are properties that you already know. So some of the ones that we've already learned like the commutative property, I have it here in blue because we'll be using it a lot in algebraic equations. The associative property, sometimes we'll use it. The identity property, definitely we'll be using a lot. And the distributive property, again, sometimes we'll need it. Some new properties that we're going to be using are properties of equality. Specifically, the addition property of equality, the subtraction property of equality, multiplication, and division property of equality. So here's what those properties of equality look like. And what it says is basically is if two numbers are equal to each other, so for example, if we had 5 equals 5 equals 5, and I added some other number to 5 over here on the left, I got 8. Well, in order to keep it equal, I've got to add 3 to the other side. So now both sides equal 8. Or if I chose instead to subtract 3, 5 minus 3 is 2, so the only way to keep the balance is to subtract 3 from the 5. That's the subtraction property of equality. So the multiplication property of equality says that if 5 equals 5, and I choose to multiply by 2. 5 times 2 is 10. Well, to keep the other side having a 10, I have to multiply by the same value. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times 2 is 10. And so what do you think the division property of equality says? That if, let's change that number second, make it 15. Say I went ahead and divided 15 by 3. Well, now it's worth 5. Well, on the other side, I have to do the exact same thing in order to keep the balance. 
So an easy way to summarize, so an easy way to summarize the properties of equality is this statement. What you do to one side, do to the other. So when you have an equation, if you do something on the left side, add, subtract, multiply, divide, square, square root, whatever, then you have to repeat it on the opposite side of the equation. And that's a very important part of solving equations. So let's go ahead and do some. So here's our equation. It says a number x is being increased by 5, and the result is 11. Now, of course, we can use mental math. And we could do this because we probably did it in first grade. But remember, we're trying to learn how to do this algebraically because we're going to be expanding beyond having to do and memorize simple number facts. <clears throat> so let's look at how this models on a picture. Okay, so here I have our equation set up. So you see that the scale is perfectly balanced. So if I went ahead and to keep this in balance, whatever I do to one side, I have to do exactly to the other. So if I want to get rid of one of these five over here to get that X, that purple X that I don't know what, what it's worth, I have to add one to both sides. Well, if I add one to both sides, now I've just added more. So that's not going to work. So let's go back to what we had. So how do I get rid of it? Well, the opposite of adding is to subtract. So if I subtract one from here, I got to subtract one from here. So I take one away from both sides. I'm down to four. Take another one away, down to three on the left. Take another one away, down to two. So, so far I've subtracted three. Now I've subtracted four. Now I've subtracted 5, and now I have that x has a value of 6. So x equals 6 is my solution. So unfortunately, we can't do that with everything. So let's go ahead and show how we show our work algebraically. So one of the things I like to do is think of my invisible fence between the two sides of the equation. That's a reminder to me to whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. So I think, what am I doing to the x? Well, I'm adding 5. So the inverse operation of addition is to subtract. So if I'm going to subtract 5 to get rid of adding 5, on the other side, I have to subtract 5. And I just use a horizontal equal sign to remind me that I'm going to simplify. So my next step is to simplify. So first, I do my inverse operation to both sides. Now, I'm going to simplify each side. Let's see what I have left. Well, 5 take away 5 is 0. So I have x plus 0. And 11 take away 5 is 6. Well, what is x plus 0? Well, the identity property says that any number plus 0 is the number itself. So we get back x. And once I get that variable isolated, this statement here is my last step when I have a one-step equation, and it's called stating the solution. Where you take the variable and you state what it is exactly equal to. So when the variable is all by itself on one side of your equation, that is your solution. <clears throat> now let's go ahead and try that with our second equation. So this equation says b take away 12 is 14. So what is the inverse of subtraction? Well, the inverse of subtraction is addition because I have to get rid of subtracting, and I do that by doing its opposite, which is adding. So I'm going to add 12, and whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. 
So I'm doing step one, inverse operation to both sides. Now I'm going to do step two, which is to simplify both sides of the equation. So I'm using my property of equality. Now, when I take away 12 and then I add 12, they make a zero. So I'm left with B plus zero and 14 plus 12 is 26. And then my identity property says B plus zero is just B. So I'm simplifying the equation further. And this is my last step stating my solution. Okay, our last equation might look a little more complicated, but it's not. It just has a fraction in it. Let's not be intimidated. So this is an addition equation. It says x plus 3 fourths equals 7 eighths. So what's the inverse of adding 3 fourths? Subtracting 3 fourths. And whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. So now, second step is to simplify. 3 fourths take away 3 fourths is 0. So we have x plus 0 is, and now off to the side, I'm going to do some arithmetic. Okay, we need a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply 4 times 2 to get 8, and 3 times 2, which will give me 6. So I have 7 eighths minus 6 eighths, which is 1 eighth. And x plus 0 is x, and x is 1 eighth. And my last step, state my solution. Now, one thing that we can always do with algebra is check and verify our answer. So we had said for this one, 6 was our solution. So to check our answer, we go back and we substitute. What is 6 plus 5? 11. Did I get the same thing on both sides? Yes. Okay, on this one, we had said that the solution was 26. So I rewrite the equation, substituting 26 for the variable, and I evaluate. What's 26 take away 12? 14. So did I get... the correct, the same thing on both sides? Yes, so I know I had the correct solution. Okay. Other basic operations are multiplication and division, so let's look at those. So we know the basic steps already are to do the inverse operation to both sides, then simplify and state our solution. So now we read the equations to see what we do. So the first equation says 5 times x equals 30. So the inverse of multiplying is to divide. So the inverse of multiplying is to divide, so I'm going to divide by 5. And whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. 5 divided by 5 makes a 1. 30 divided by 5 is 6. Well, the identity property for multiplication says 1 times x is just x, giving me x equals 6. And there's my solution. So my check is 5 times 6 gives me 30. Now let's read this next equation. It says a number divided by 8 is 4. Well, what's the inverse of multiplying by 8? <clears throat> so this equation says a number divided by 8 is 4. So what's the inverse of dividing by 8? Multiplying by 8. So I'm going to multiply by 8. And remember, multiplying by 8 doesn't mean I do this. That means 8 times 8, which is 64. I really want to multiply like this because I don't want to multiply the 8 in the denominator by the 8. I want to multiply the numerator by 8. And that's because knowing our fraction operations, this 8 will cancel that 8. And then the 1 
any number divided by one gives us back that number. And whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. So I'm left with a divided by one is 32. And any number divided by one gives us back that number. And we get 32, so this is my solution. So my check, what's 32 divided by eight? Four. Now again, this is a multiplication problem. And it says 2 thirds times a number d equals 9 fourths. And what's the inverse of multiplication? Division. So I'm going to start off like I would. I would divide by 2 thirds. So divide by 2 thirds. Any number divided by itself gives us 1. So off to the side, I'm going to do my arithmetic. 9 fourths divided by 2 thirds. I keep the first number the same, change dividing to multiplying, and I reciprocate. Remember, keep change flip. And now I go ahead and I do my multiplication. 9 times 3 is 27. 4 times 2 is 8. There are no common factors. And uh, since 9 fourths was already an improper fraction, I get 27 eighths. And that tells me that D equals 27 over 8, which is my solution.